You took it out, you I beat did. it up. Yes. And he hasn't looked underneath it. We're gonna take a look <laughs> underneath and see. Hey you guys, this is exciting. I'm here with Gabriel, this is his. This is yours. It is, it well, is mine. <laughs> so before we get right into this, so we're at M&J Automotive in Placerville. Um, they've been the host for this Overland Bound Meetup. You brought this here tonight. I did. Let's talk about it. Tell me why this is special. What are we looking at here? And how long have you had it, Gabriel? Well, we'll go with the easy question, which okay. is how long have I had it? <laughs> I've had it uh, since the end of December of 2023. Yeah. It's been about a two, little over two year wait uh, once we put the reservations in. Did you, did you jump on it right away? I did. And, yeah. and this is a Grenadier. Yes, 2024 Ineos Grenadier. Yeah. Um, it kind of uh, was birthed out of a passion project, a gentleman yeah. over in the UK who was pretty sad that the classic Defender came to the end of production. Right. He offered Land Rover to continue production, take over tooling, modernize it, modernize the vehicle, bring it up to standards. Yep. Land Rover initially was excited about it and they chatted about it. And then an issue of intellectual property became right. a stumbling block for Land Rover. So they backed out and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna go build my own. Right. So he got together with his buddies at the Grenadier Pub in the UK. Yeah. And they started their initial sketches of, hey, this is our requirements document. What do we, what do we want this thing to look yeah. like? So. And the story there is, is understandable. Anybody who is um, just familiar with the Land Rover history and especially yeah. the Defender 110, many of us here were inspired by some of the earlier races, the adventure races and- yeah. Camel um, Trophy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, there was a departure at Land Rover away from sort of that kind of pure, totally utilitarian. Yep. I, I won't dive too far into that. Everyone's yeah. got opinions about it. Sure. But clearly embracing what is the essence of, of Land Rover, but yeah. it's not a Land Rover platform. It's not. It's yeah. a clean sheet design. It's yeah. brand new from the bottom. Very cool. Yeah. Can you really quickly for us sure. run down like the things that people are interested in? Yeah. Anything you know about ground clearance, yeah. but yeah. Um, or or gas mileage engine, stuff like that. What, yeah. are we, what are we talking about here? Well, we'll start with the motor. Yep. BMW B58 engine yep. and over a million vehicles, proven design, yep. proven platform, nothing complicated. They uh -huh. decided let's save on cost, so they went with that. Yep. Um, it puts out about a little over 330 pounds of torque, just Great. over 280 horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, so the interesting bits, a uh, little over 10 and a half inches of clearance. It comes on 31.6 inch uh, tires. Yep. You can source KO2s I, or I believe a Bridgestone is the other one mm -hmm. on 17 or 18 inch wheels. Yeah, so KO2s are a great tire. You know what? They're bulletproof. Yeah. They're yeah. great. They're For great. Yep. what I do, they're perfect. Yep. Um, Depart approach and departure angles are just over 30 degrees, like in the 32 degree region. Breakover, mm -hmm. I believe, is, is it 28? I mm -hmm. can't quite remember. Uh, this I'll is, put it on the. I'll put it on the thing. Yeah. I'll put it on yeah, the video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 you can film the diagram. I have all that stuff in there, <laughs> and you cool. can you can post that that's up. A, um, that's, that's handy, actually. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's a body on frame uh -huh. design. Yep. Very rigid. Mm -hmm. um, it has solid axles front and rear from the factory. Great. I optioned it, this one. Uh, by default, it comes with a standard, it comes with a center locking differential two, uh, two speed transfer case. I uh -huh. know. I optioned this one for front and rear lockers, so that comes from the factory like that. Great. Yes. Are, are they air or electric? I'm curious. They are electric. The, the e lockers, they, they, all, they always work, and there's, yeah. there's, no, there's usually no issue. Base price, this is. Um, uh, by most standards, an expensive rig. Yeah. I think yeah. what's going to be really interesting, and <laughs> this is going to be very personal to you. Yeah. What's going to be very interesting over the coming years yeah. is the durability and the lifespan. 100%. Like, for you, yeah. like the true cost of ownership, what does that end up being? And if they're durable and yeah. they last, yeah. then that goes a heck of a long ways. You, they com it comes with a five year, 60,000 mile warranty. Yeah. Um, the service intervals are minimal. You just have to take it in once a year to yep. get stuff done. So I'm not too concerned about stuff breaking on me, at least in that first window. Yeah. It's the longevity 
beyond year yeah. five that yeah. I'll start to be like, okay, what am I getting into? It's, and it's the, the, the putting the, um, uh, uh, the design philosophy yeah. of the company yeah. to the test yeah. long term. Yeah. That's the design philosophy is, hey, yeah. let's, let's have it last a long time. Should we uh, lift it up and see what we did to it? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. <laughs> let's do that. Let's take. Let's lift it up. I'm. Uh, I'm anxious <laughs> to see what what happened underneath. So, yeah. For the dispersed campsites within the uh, national park, we have 100. Uh, Kent runs the Sierra Foothills Overland Bound Meetup. He's retired Cal Fire, and he's Overland Bound's executive director. He's also a good friend. Before we lifted the Grenadier up on the rack to see the damage that was done, Kent ran the Overland Bound crew through the details of a cleanup with the National Park Service that we'll be doing in the Mojave Desert. Thanks for everything, Kent. And thanks to Gabe for running the Overland Bound members through the details of your new rig. Now, let's see the damage that was done. Hard. It's a little dented and dinged, yeah, little and there's there's forest everywhere down here. As you get to, I think I ripped this off here a little bit. Oh, yeah. Here you go. You know what's nice that they did though on this housing to the cover yeah. is like you see on like Dana axles where the cover actually sticks down below the the, the casting. Okay. And that's why you hear about guys like peeling back Dana covers. Oh, yeah. This is actually not much, but it's above it though. Yeah. The, the lip of the, the almost, cover is above almost it. Almost flush. Yeah. How about my sliders? Yep, my sliders got some action. Yep. Mike, you've been crawling around this thing uh, for a little while. So tell me what's good. Tell me what you'd improve. What do you see? So good, uh, the axles, the suspension look really good. Like everything looks really beefy. All the brackets on all the suspension is all nice and thick material. Like I don't think you're gonna be bending stuff like you see that's common on a lot of other vehicles where you're bending um, link tabs and those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, so all that stuff looks good. It's kind of tight under here space wise. Uh huh. Um, but as far as something that I would improve and I don't even know that it's an improvement. It's just kind of a concern. Yeah. And I'm sure that an engineer has gone through this, but the fact that the rear drive shaft is on at multiple angles on its CVs, yeah. I'm interested to see what the longevity of that is, um, if they are going to last a long time or if it's going to be something that, that may be an issue. Got it. So it's not linear. It's yeah, got it, a bend. It's got a twist. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not straight. You know, it's, it's got its up and down, obviously, from yep. the transfer case to the axle, but it's also got an angle sideways. Yeah. So, which is putting the CVs in multiple angles at the same time, which is usually not good. So, but we'll see, you know, yeah. time will tell. Um, other stuff, I mean, it's small stuff, little ABS harness stuff is kind of a little low for my liking. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, it'd be nicer if this stuff was more up here, just so you don't kind of get this sticks yeah. and stuff like to, to catch on wiring. And uh, on a lot of newer vehicles, you start losing ABS wiring and stuff and everything goes haywire. So, yeah. but again, time will tell, you know, these are new and from what I see so far, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the way that they've put everything together. Cool, now Mike, you were talking about something up front, like uh, a protection, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the front, uh, two things that I, that I noticed is one, the starter is hanging out Right, right down here at the very bottom of the engine, which is cool for maintenance and repair. Uh, but yeah. like, this is the positive battery connection. It's just, it's almost the lowest thing on the whole engine. So yeah. that, and then the transmission pan is also pretty exposed here, and it's also plastic. Which the plastic is not a huge big deal, but the fact that it's plastic and exposed could be a problem. Yeah. So I was telling Gabe, you know, some kind of protection that runs from this transmission crossmember up you know, to the to at least the front edge of this starter would be something that would be first on my list if this was mine as far as stuff to get as far as underbody protection. Cool. Mike, thanks for being our host tonight. Absolutely. Tell us about tell us about your shop. Where are we at? So we're uh, in Placerville, Diamond Springs, California. Yep. Uh, we are uh, off road kind of focused shop, but yep. we do everything, and that's kind of our deal. Is you know we believe that 
most of the failures that people see off-road yep. are due to lack of inspections and lack of maintenance. They're, they're, not doing, <laughs> they're not doing this stuff before right. they're going out on trips, right? So that's a big thing that we try to push is right on. doing inspections before you go and then doing inspections when you come back from a big trip too. Right so on. that you have a before and you have an after. Great. Right? You, you've got a good idea of the condition before you go and we can take care of any issues. And not just off-road stuff, normal yep. maintenance stuff too. You know, tune-ups, all that kind of stuff. We do everything. Yeah, right so, on. So, you know, there, a lot of our vehicles that are heavily modified, you take them to the dealership or to some shops to try to come service and they're like, yeah, we don't, we're not going to mess with your dual battery and your solar and yeah. blah, blah, blah. You yeah. know, Joe and I both, that's, it's our it's our jam. We love that stuff. Right on. So, you know, we like to be able to incorporate the aftermarket stuff it, along with your normal maintenance and, and inspections yeah. and stuff. So. Right on. Cool. So, M&J Automotive? M&J Automotive. And can people find you on a website or anything like that? Yep. It's mnjautomotive.com. Cool. We're on the Overland Mount I'll, 1 app. I'll put it there, right? Yep. Right on. We're on cool. the Overland Mount 1 app. Right uh, on. Google, Yelp, all that stuff. You know, all the normal business places were there. Great. So, all right, you guys, come and check them out. Bring the rigs in, and thanks a lot for being our host tonight. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, you bet. Appreciate you. Hey, you didn't hit me with the money hand. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel. So oh. we lifted it up, and uh, indeed, there are some things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> some superficial stuff. Not but, too bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Real damage. Superficial. Seems to have done the job on the trail, though. It, it, which is great. It excelled. Yeah, it which excelled. is really, really good. Yeah. Um, and then getting under there myself, I, just looking at the the simplicity of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's real comforting. It's like solid axle, body yeah. on frame. Yeah. You know, it's it seems like it's just a real solid design. And then Mike was saying, yeah, it looks durable. It looks yeah. durable under there. Yeah. I. That's the feedback we're we're starting to hear. Yeah. And that's how that's the purpose it was built for. And yeah. If you need to service this in the field, if you're, you know, God forbid something really bad happens, yeah. hopefully it's not that difficult to repair. You mentioned a couple of other things that I'll mention yeah. for you guys. Uh, it's got a key. It does. It comes with a key. It has a blade. There's no yeah. push button. Yeah. There's no fob. There's no yeah. sensing anything for That's automatic cool. door locks. No. Um, and then uh, you said you ever had a pre-flight checklist, checklist because yeah. they're continually upgrading the firmware. Yeah, the software so, is there's just some some bugs in there and yeah. It, well, it was one thing you mentioned specifically, which was the reset on the speed. It's so there's a system called ADAS, yeah. Automatic Driver Assistance System. Yep. And part of that is lane departure. Part of that is uh, speed. Looking at uh, speed limit signs. Yeah. And if you go one mile an hour over, you'll hear this loud audible click, 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 telling going off. you telling you, tattling on you. Got it. And if you drop underneath, you're good. If you go back over, and you can dive down in the menus with about five button presses to get to it. Yeah. And turn it off. Yeah. Just that one warning function. Yeah, got it. So you, you so. do that, and then I guess they're upgrading <clears throat> firmware, so hopefully yeah. there'll be an update that'll kind of solve that for you. The only thing we're asking is that when you turn it off, it stays off. Right. That's right. all we care about. Yeah, is memory, that just, any kind of Just that memory. sound goes yeah. away. Yeah. And I don't care about the lane departure tone. That's fine. I like. I don't care about that. Yep but it's that one click, 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 one mile an hour over, that's just unreal, yep. especially in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gabriel, thanks for sharing, hey. and uh, I know you got it out on the trail. You're using this thing, so we'll see you out there. Yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Looking right forward on. to it. Yeah, cool, thanks. Thank you.